Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to practice. We're going to do a little bit of work into the thigh fronts and into the legs today. So we're going to start by taking a bolster out long on the mat, so nice and long lengthways, and then taking a brick or a folded blanket will also work and just placing that for your head on the furthest end of the bolster away from you. Take your time to bring your buttock down, not super close to the bolster. You want to have you want to have a little bit of space. Like I always think about a fist width is good, but, you know, listen to your back. And just drop yourself back. So I know that you're a little bit, maybe you're a little bit higher than you usually go, but we're going to give, you know, use this space. Start by just taking the legs out nice and wide. Have the feet round about mat width, maybe even a little wider, and you can adjust those as you go. Good morning, son. And just take a minute, feet to the floor, knees to the ceiling, and drop your arms out to the side. So let's just get a little opening across the chest before we begin. Just a few deep breaths to let the spine come into just a really gentle, pretty accessible supported back bend. And just depending on the capsule of your shoulders, you might want to take the arms even overhead and just deepen it a little bit more. Again, just for a few breaths. See if you can just draw breath down into the belly. Just kind of start to feel the back of the neck waking up, upper back, the lower back. Let's bring the hands down. When you're ready, take a hold of the ankles and then slowly drop the right knee down as if you wanted to take it towards the top of the left foot. And you're going to get this really nice, lovely stretch down through the front of the right thigh and come on back up. And take the left knee down. And the same thing. And we're looking to try and just wake up this front groin. And you'll see if you notice on this side that I'm just turning the big toe side of the foot down to the floor and the little toe side up towards the ceiling. So I've lifted the sole of the foot. If you can, you hold the ankle, but don't worry if you can't, just hands beside you. Come on up with the left knee. Let's go down with the right. And just start moving side to side. I think a couple of breaths on each pass. Maybe you've got one side that's a little bit tighter. Maybe noticing that. Maybe lingering on that side a little longer. And then the warnings for this pose really, it's fine to feel even a significant stretch in the belly of the thigh is fine. You just don't want to feel it in the knee. So if it's getting, if you're getting any catching in the knee, particularly the inner knee, just don't go down so far. All right. So if you feel like you want to go a little bit further, we're going to hold. So We'll hold with right knee down. And if you want to go further, bring the top of the right foot to the floor. So you, in this case, if you're going to work top of the right foot to the floor, you want to make sure that the right knee is coming more or less straight off that right hip. If that's not okay, just work where we were. I'm going to give the option to go a little bit further with the left knee for those that feel that they've got the space. Sole of the left foot to the inner right knee and just let the left knee fall out like the page of a book. If you feel like there's even a little bit more potential inside the left knee, just without forcing it, bring the top of the left foot to the top of the right thigh. 
and can use that right a left foot to kind of press that right thigh down a little. Okay, last few moments here, working right side of the body. We can extend the pose further by taking the arms overhead. So that's now going to bring in the whole of this stomach channel. The stomach channel is kind of a, a real front body channel that falls from the face down. So it's, it comes like, it, it's coming up through the thigh where you can feel it here into the groin. You can feel it at the highest point of the ribs. So where the high point of the front ribs is, that's where stomach channel passes through. Comes right up. It actually crosses through the nipple. So actually the stomach channel has a lot to do with uh, breastfeeding. It comes up through the middle of the clavicle and it ends under the eyes. So from the kind of from the eyes, the center of the base of the eye, right down to the second toe, all through the front panel of the body, you've got this beautiful stomach channel. But let's lower the hands if you've got them raised. Unwrap that right leg, lift the left knee back up to the center, adjust the lower back if needed, and then let's take it down on the left side. So just take a moment to set it up. So remember, you might just drop the foot down and be working there. You might get the top of the foot and fold it through. And in which case, just have a look down, see if you can get that knee more or less in line with the hip. It'll tend to want to splay to the left. Okay, options with the right leg are, as it is, just leave it there or bring the sole of the right foot to the inner left knee and drop the right knee out to the right. So it just kind of falls like the page of a book. Or go a little further and bring the top of the right foot to the left thigh so that it starts pressing it down, giving it a little bit more depth. So given that, you know, this quadricep muscle is one of the biggest in the body, it doesn't open quickly. It doesn't lengthen quickly. So we have to spend a little bit of time creating that length, breathing into that length. And because it is such a big muscle, it has a really profound effect on the story of the lower back. So when we get tight through the front groins and through the quadriceps, it tends to kind of crunch the body forwards at the groin fronts and over opens the lower back or creates a strain pattern as the lower back tries to pull you back upright. So just allow this really important part of the body to lengthen. Take the arms overhead last few moments. All right, let's lower the arms down. Unwrap the left leg. So now you bring soles of both feet to the floor, both knees to the ceiling. We're going to lean down into the hands to roll ourselves up if the back is okay. So elbows down, chin to chest, cross the legs over. Come through all fours, turn the toes under and lift it up to a downward dog, but leave your props there in place. You can just straddle the feet around the props if you like. Just lift and lower the heels of the feet. Let's just get a little bit of length into the opposing side of the leg, which of course is the back panel. Let the head really drop. Knees can be bent or straight, and you might just want to drop the heels one at a time down. And then drop the knees to the floor in front of the prop. Have the knees at about hip distance apart. Actually, you want to be 
and bring the thumbs in behind the knees and slowly roll the skin back and sit yourself down. Now you want to sit a little bit forward of the prop with the feet folded outside of you, if that's possible. If it's almost possible but not quite, reach back for your brick and elevate the buttercup on the brick and that'll take all the work out of the ankles. If you feel like you can get there with two legs, let's just see how you go. Start to lean back. Just make sure that props there. And this secondary block is going to really help this pose. So as you get back to the forearms, if you get that far, lift the hips, lift the pubic bone, drop the hips back down. So you lengthen the lower back and bring yourself back to rest the head on the brick. The lift of the head really does just give the back of the body the chance to come more gently into this pose. If lying back isn't working, just stay seated. And then maybe take the arms overhead. So we're just going to give this a full minute, whichever variation you're in. If you feel like you can go further, take the brick under the head away. And see how that feels once you've brought yourself down. If you're in the upright position, bring the palms of the hands to the soles of the feet and just very gently with the heel of the thumb, imagine you're putting a little weight towards the little toe side and offering a soft spiral in the lower half of the leg. There should be no discomfort in the knees, but it's absolutely okay to feel a deep stretch through that belly of the quadricep. As I said, this particular part of the body doesn't lengthen quickly, so we've got to allow time. All right, let's lower the arms if you've got them raised. Dig the elbows into the mat, lift the chin to the chest, and then start coming back up, bring the body upright. Wherever you're seated, just move that bolster out and away now to the side. Use your hands to switch yourself through to all fours. As to tabletop position, turn the toes under. Let's come back into downward dog. So again, go for an easy version. So maybe take the feet wide, lift and lower. So you're moving through the back lines of the legs. You're bringing a lot of blood back into the back of the knees here. Just with time few breaths you can start stepping the feet back into kind of more of a normal or regular pattern of downward dog feet at hip distance again lifting lower the heels and then bring the left foot to the middle of the mat and raise the right heel up in line with the buttock. And you're going to feel how that gives a little bit more work into the back lines of the left leg. When you're ready, step the left foot forward between the hands. So let's bring it through nice and long. Turn the right heel down behind you. Bring the right hand to the big toe side. You could always use a brick here. We're coming into Trikonasana. Raise the left arm up to the roof. And this is just a really nice counter pose. I'm going to bring a little bit of that attention back into the legs. 
that's what happens in the earth element that kind of end summer point we start spiraling back in from all those dizzy heights so use the legs to kind of ground and lock down so lift the inside right knee and from the left kidney travel all the way down to the left sole of the foot Squeeze the sitting bones together just a little bit here. That's a subtle adjustment. Reach through the crown, looking up if you can. Breathe in and breathe out. Turn the gaze, look down. Let's take a deep, long bend through the front right knee and take the top left arm over, Pasvakonasana, the side angle pose. Steady long breath. That left side body long as you reach from the sole of the foot to the tall finger. The little finger side of the left hand turns down to create the space in the shoulder. We want to squeeze the sitting bones together just a little. Nice. Both hands down. Either side of the front foot, step back, downward dog. And just feel the left leg compared to the right. Spread the toes, open the sole of the foot to the floor. When you're ready, step the right foot a little closer to the left and raise the left heel up in line with the buttocks. So what we're not doing is twisting the hips. Let's see if you can keep the sacrum level. And then step the right foot through, uh, sorry, left foot through between the hands. Turn that right heel down. So coming into the trikonasana, you can always use a brick. Left hand down, right arm to the roof. Just focus on what's happening in the legs here. Sitting bones, moving together at left Inner knee is lifting from the right kidney down to the sole of the right foot. If you can feel the two working together. And then bring that soft palate in and lengthen. And looking down, deep bend through that front left leg. See if you can get it to 90 degrees. Top right arm comes over. Turn the head again. Look up if you can. Pause, Vakonasana, the side angle pose. So if you can just use these to really deeply stretch the body. From the sole of the right foot, to the palm of the right hand, breathe in, breathe out. Both hands down, either side of the front foot, step back, downward dog. Let's come forward into plank, knees, chest, chin to the floor. Let's slowly bring it down. Point the toes, round the tail through. And take the palms of the hands back so that they're just alongside the outer hips and press down into the floor. Tops of the feet to the floor, firm the legs and see if you can spiral the heels out. Then on your inhalation, lift the chest. This is the Salabhasana, the first form of the pose. Now, draw the heel of the hands up towards the waist, enough to start to bend the elbow a little. Then pause there, press the hands down and back a little bit. Use that action to widen the collarbones. Soft back of neck, hold the pose. Okay, raise the legs. When we say the skin of the inner upper arm spirals out, 
can really feel that action here as that upper arm skin moves away from the torso. Nice deep breath here, inhale. Exhale, slowly lower it down. Turn the hands around, setting up for cobra pose. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, downward dog, take it back. Now just move your brick towards the front edge of your mat there if it's not already, just so you've got your eye on where it is in case you need it. Step the left foot closer to the right and then raise the right heel up in line with the buttock. Try to keep the sacrum parallel to the ceiling, to the floor. Then step the right foot nice and wide forward and through between the hands. Coming to a high lunge position here, so keep the rear heel lifted and slowly raise the torso up. With your right hand, hold your left wrist and side bend towards the right. So that's the same as the bent front leg. So if you can lift a little bit the pubic bone here, so even though we're side bending, we're still remaining integral in the base. Then feel what you've created in that long left side. Let's use that and bring the left elbow down outside the right thigh, palms of the hands together in prayer. Turn the chest. Long breath. Strong legs, looking down to the floor, both hands down, unwrap. Step the rear foot forward just enough so that you can get both feet down at the heel. And then walk your right foot just a little further out to the right and bring your brick in to the big toe side of the right foot. I'm going to go high end on my brick. Bring the left hand up onto the brick, looking forwards, breathe in, firm the thighs. So from this forward space, feel like you're rolling the thighs in. And then clipping right hip back, turn to the right and open the right arm up. So Parivrita Trikonasana or the revolved version of Trikonasana. Strong through the back leg. So you can lower that brick down if you've got a little bit more space. Nice deep inhale. And exhale, let it go. We're stepping back to downward dog. So release the brick. Step the right leg back. Readjust. And step the right foot closer to the left. Raise the left heel up, heel in line with the buttock. And then when you're ready, step it through, left foot. So high lunge is where we're starting this sequence. So slowly bring it up. Reach for the roof. You can already feel how much work we've done in the legs. Use the left hand to now draw the right wrist across. So it's a side bend to the left, to the bent leg side. Firm that right buttock. So really commit the rear leg. Take the base. And use all of that length through the outer right side of the body. Bring that right elbow down outside the thigh. Palms to prayer. Turn the chest. See if you can look over the left shoulder. Steady breath. Release, both hands down. Walk the left foot a little to the left. 
Step the right foot further forwards. Straighten through both legs. Bring your brick in. So the brick's big toe side, and it's more or less in line with the sternum. The left foot's a little bit stepped out to the left. Firm both thighs and roll them in a little towards each other. And as you twist left, this outer left hip sort of needs, it wants to come forward to the left, needs to feel like it's drawing back. Go right on ahead and lift the left arm up to the roof. So you can always adjust the brick to a lower angle. A few deep breaths. See if you can catch it. Cross that upper back. Inhale fully. And exhale, slowly release. Both hands down. Step it back. Plank pose. Knees to the floor, chest, chin down. Point the toes round the tail. Come back to the first setup for Salabhasana. So hands back behind you, arms nice and straight, feet at hip distance apart. Lift the kneecap so your legs are firm and bring the pubic bone to the navel. Lift the chest on inhale. Feel the back muscles firing up. Drag the heel of the hand a little bit up the mat towards the waist. Now focus on lifting the skin of the inner upper arm, the collarbones, the chest. Steady breath. And raise the legs. See if you can lengthen the big toe side of the foot, even though you keep turning the heels out. Lift a little higher. Maybe go a little further, lift the hands off the floor, back of the hands face the roof. Interlace the hands at the sacrum, maybe lift the chest. Three more breaths. Soften the back of the neck. Go ahead and slowly lower down. Set up for Cobra Pose. Inhale, lift the chest. Exhale, downward dog, roll it back and let's stretch this out. So nice deep breaths into the back of the body. Steady and slow. Let the head fall here. Good, and then walk the feet forwards to the top of the mat. Standing forward fold. Feet hip distance apart. Inhale, looking up. Exhale, hollow the belly, folding down. Inhale, rising all the way up to standing. Raise the arms. And exhale, hands down beside you. So bring the feet to hip distance apart. And if balance is a little bit tricky, you can always just shift over to stand near a wall. Let's bring the right foot up. With the right hand, take a trigger grip, right big toe. Left hand to the hip, lift the chest. So what we want to do here is just keep the right knee Pull deeply in towards the side body. Strengthen the left leg. Okay, stay here or partially or fully extend the right leg forwards. Chest is lifted. You can always rest the left hand on the wall 
on a chair. Let's take the right leg out to the right now. So you can work a deeply bent variation. Good, and inhale, come back to the center. Now we're gonna release the hands and just send that right leg forward, point the toes. Try and get it as high as you can. Okay, last one. Now, either tree pose or go a little bit further into Ada Padman Vrikshasan. So if you're left hand holding right foot, maybe raise the right arm upwards towards the ceiling if you're in that extended version. If you're in tree pose, just bring yourself into whichever of the trees you're working with. So foot at the groin, calf or ankle. Good, and then slowly let it go. It's a lot of work for the left leg. You can feel the difference between the two legs, that solidity through left. Let's try and recreate that now and bring that into the right. So take a moment to square off the left foot, slowly bring uh, the right foot, slowly bring the left foot up, take a ring grip. Again, work off a table, work off a wall. So for me, balance in my right leg is really difficult. So I do often work off a wall for a long balance series on the, just the right side. Maybe extend forwards. And often these balance issues come from the lower back. So see if you can work right up in the hara between the navel and the pubic bone. So you're steady in front of that lower spine. Okay, see how you go left leg to the left. Remember it can be deeply bent. The right arm out to the right will assist in your balance. Steady your eyes. Your gaze is a good part of your balance practice. Okay, bringing that woo, <laughs> left leg back to the center. It's no shame in falling. Extend left leg forward, no hands. All right, now bending up that left leg. Last part of this, we're going to bring it to tree pose or Ardha Padma Vrikshasan. Any mudra you like. If you're working with the, the Padmasan variation, be nice to hold the left foot in the right hand. Raise that right arm up to the roof. Balance. This is how we reconnect deeply with gravity and those earth currents. Inhale. Exhale. Slowly let it all go. And just feel all of that fullness in the legs now. As you inhale, bend the knees, just bring the fingertips down to scrape the floor just in front of you. Have all the weight in the legs and then sweep the arms upwards towards the ceiling, chair pose. Now this can be done with hands to the hips if the raised arms are a little bit too much load for the spine. Sinking down, sinking down, heels of the feet. Have a little lift in the pubic bone, but not so much that you lose the natural curves of the spine. Good, deep breath here in. Exhale, let's take a forward fold, bring it down. Half lift on inhale, open the chest, step it back, plank. Knees to the floor, chest, chin. Point the toes around the tail. Clear the collarbone, skin of the upper arm as you lift into cobra. And exhale, come back to all fours. 
Let's keep the tops of the feet on the floor for a moment and bring the body upright to kneeling. From here, bring the hands to the lower back with the fingers pointing down and use that as the cue to bring the pubic bone to the navel slightly so you'll feel that lift start to come in the lower body. And as you hold that lift, just gently open the chest towards the roof. Tops of the feet to the floor. Roll the little toe side out a little and try to keep the knees over the hips. Then you bend back as you open at the upper back. Good. Come all the way back to center. Bring the hands to prayer. Bow the head forward. So just let the body reverse that back bend for a moment. So that's the kind of key or the root pose to the back bending series is to keep the pubic bone lifted to navel and to open from the upper back. Let's come back down onto all fours. So keeping that in mind, bring the chest down through between the thumbs, point the um, toes around the tail down. Open the feet up to about the distance of the hips. Bend the knees back, bear kasana, grab the tops of the feet. So in the bow pose, we lift away. In bear kasana, we're pulling the heels in. Now bring the pubic bone to the navel. Draw the tops of the feet towards you. Just use your hands here. Bend your elbows and lift the elbows to the roof. Then keep the feet drawn in. And as you inhale, lift the chest. So we've got that same movement. Keep pressing the pubic bone forward and focus on lifting the chest. Good, slowly let it go. Don't do, keep hold of the feet, but kind of let go of the pressure. Now pointing the toes, straighten the arms, kick the feet into the hands, bring the pubic bone to the navel. Inhale, lifting up. So feel pubic bones moving towards the navel, but the lift is coming through the back of the heart here. The lower back should feel kind of nice and quiet. Press the feet back into the hands. Point the toes. Good. Slowly lower down on inhale. Release the feet. Hands in line as if a cobra. Inhale, lift the chest. Ujjangasana. Exhale, all four. Walk the knees forward. We're going to just keep back bending for a moment. Bring the hands, walk them up the thighs, come back up to the kneeling position. Turn the toes under. It's a little bit deeper this time. Start with hands to the low back. Move the skin of the buttock down towards the back of the knee. Lift the chest. Just come into that primary position. Notice that, well, I hope my alignment's on point. You've got knee and uh, hip are in line. The lift is coming from right up in my upper back. That's where I want to feel this coming from. Draw the elbows back. That's going to help you exaggerate that skin of the inner upper arm rolls back. All right, toes are tucked. Let's go right on ahead and just take the hands back to the heels. All this does now is switches it on a little bit more. Maybe raise the gaze upwards towards the ceiling. Lots of options. Beautiful. Inhale, coming back up, palms to prayer. Bow the head. I want to do that one more time. But if you found that the um, heels of the feet were a long way away for your arms, Get your bolster, bring it over the lower, um, just bring it over the Achilles heel. What we're going to do is take the pose with the assistance of the bolster. So that's there. All right, two more to go. 
hands to lower back. Feel how you're moving the sitting bones down. You're assisting that action of the whole pelvis to lift up, pubic bone to navel. Start sending the hips forward. Start lifting the chest up. Bring the elbows back. Okay, hands can come back. Maybe they just reached out to that bolster now because you've got the space. Maybe you managed to bring the hands back down to the heels of the feet. Now, if you're on the heels of the feet and you can go further, I'm, I won't do this, but flatten the tops of the feet to the floor. Lift the chest, look to the roof, thighs strong, pressing forwards. Remember the knees are over the hips and the back bends in the upper back. Beautiful. Inhale, come up. Okay, chin to chest, hands to prayer. Just let it reverse. Bring the tops of the feet to the floor now. Last one, readjust. Okay, this one's a little bit different. You probably won't go so deep. Raise the arms up towards the roof. Keep the sitting bones moving down here strongly. Now from the upper back, lean back. Reaching away. In the full form of this pose, we drop back and bring the crown of the head to the floor. I don't know whether it's turning 50, but I just can't do that one anymore. Nice deep breath here. Inhale, feel all of the muscular action and exhale, let it go. And we're coming to child's pose. So super slow, drop it down, buttocks to the heels. And it's always nice to pause there for a moment when you're moving from back bend to forward bend. And then bring it down into that child's pose. Now I use a brick these days to make up for what I've lost in the spine. So slowly, slowly, that might help you. Let's take the knees wide. Even if you need to come down to forearms first, bring the forehead to that brick for a period of time while the spine slowly decompresses from quite a few back bends. Take as much time as you need. Bring it down. Nice deep breaths to the back of the waist. Elbows soft. Just really sense that connection to earth through the third eye, through the crystal ball of the third eye. Not only do you relax the belly and let it breathe towards the earth, let it breathe with gravity, but also let the skin of the forehead and the third eye just really soften down. Like it's as if we're just giving over allowing ourselves to be heavy after what was a strong set through the legs, through the back bends. Let's go right on ahead and bring the body upright. Bring the knees together. I'm going to go through a Bharad Vajasan here, which is a lovely way to release the whole of the spine. So drop the hips over to the left of the mat. And I'm going to take a variation. So unfold your left leg and bring the sole of the left foot to the inner right knee. And just see how that feels. Exhale, twist to the left. You've got this kind of nice little pretzel shape in the legs, right heels beside the outer right hip, turning, turning. Use the right hand to lift up. Open the chest and then turn the head to the right. So we turn the head in the opposite direction, 
Take the right ear back and really lengthen here. And release, inhale. Let's switch it up, opposite side. So right shin bone parallel to the top of the mat, left heel folded in beside left outer hip, turn to the right. And as you turn, whatever resistance you can feel, just be soft work with that, not against it. See if you can lift up through that right knee. So use the left hand and then de-rotate the head to the left. Inhale, release. Take it back around to the first side. Left shin bone parallel to top of mat. Right foot tucked by the outer right hip. Stay here. Or take the left foot and bring it on top of the right thigh. So you've got an, a padmasan or a half lotus variation here to play with as an option. Turn to the left. If you can, if you've got the half lotus, see if you can't take the left hand around and grab the top of the and grab the left big toe. Turning, turning. Right hand holds the left knee, or if you can, bring it underneath. De-rotate the head. Take the right ear back. Lift the chest. Inhale, release. Opposite side. So switch it around. Right shin bone parallel to top of mat. Left heel drawn in. Option to take it a little bit further and bring the right foot up into that Padmasan variation. So you need just a little bit of length in the top of the ankle there. Twisting to the right, turning, turning. If you can, take the right hand around. You grab the top of the left foot or the left big toe and de-rotate the head, looking to the left. And you'll feel, if you've got the bind, you'll feel how that work takes you right into the neck. Good, and then slowly release on inhale. Okay, switch it back to the first side. Right foot tucked up by the outer right hip, left leg bent. And then bring the left sole of the foot to the floor, left knee to the ceiling. Take a hold of either side of the left foot and just partially or fully straighten it into the crane. Lift the chest. Few deep breaths. See if you can squeeze a little bit the sitting bones together underneath you and lift up into the soft palate. Beautiful. Slowly release. See how you go if that left foot will go up into the groin again. Twist to the left. De-rotate the head to the right. Lean back. Release. Opposite side, last one of these. So left ankle tucked up beside the outer left hip. Sole of the right foot to the floor, right knee to the ceiling. Reach down, grab the foot. Just maybe partially straighten it. 
Maybe you go all the way. Quality of the pose really is in the capacity to lift the chest, not the capacity to straighten the back of the, the right leg. Just work with what you've got. A little bit work the sitting bones beneath you. A little bit work up towards the crown of the head. Feel the axial length. Good, slowly release the right leg, maybe bringing it into the Padmas and maybe just sole of the foot to the inner groin again. Twist to the right. Good, inhale, release. This time unwrap both legs out long in front. Just give them a little shake. Reaching out for your strap. And roll the body down to the floor. Knees bent. And bring the knees upwards towards the chest and loop the strap around the balls of the feet. It's just nice to finish with an inversion after all of that leg work. So as you extend the legs up into the strap, you can have the knees bent or straight, but just to let it kind of be a relaxed pose here. So it's just the weight of the arms and the weight of the legs. Just see if you can let everything feel as if it's just dropping backwards. Release the legs, gather the knees up, draw them towards the chest. From here, let's go out into Shavasana, so extend the legs. Drop your arms to the sides. Let there be a long out breath. Breathes out through the mouth like a sigh. <sighs> Just let everything come to the floor. When we're working with the element of the earth, it's a lot in us that's just allowing the weight of the body to be. It's like when the grains get heavy on the stalks of wheat or rice, when the fruit gets heavy on the branch, and as it moves towards maturity, as it moves towards ripeness, that grain or that fruit falls towards the earth. It surrenders its weight. So allow there to be a sense of completion of the seasonal year starting to move through you. Just that hint that the growing season is soon coming to an end. Inevitable approach of the winter. While the winter holds a different kind of work, right now there's almost an element of restful surrender. 
the weight of everything just as it is. And that beautiful mantra that you just can't say to yourself enough times, which is just simply, I am enough. I am enough. I am enough. I'm just taking one more long breath there. And of course, you can always stay longer if time allows. Otherwise, you're working to time this morning. Let's bring the sole of the right foot to the floor and roll out to the left. And bring yourself up to a comfortable seated position. Let's bring the palms to prayer over the heart and bow the head. Namaste. Thank you, everyone.